Scariest or Strangest Thing You've Seen in a National Park or National Forest, Part 6. Get comfy and enjoy the show if you're into it. Smash that subscribe button and spread the word about Thread Tonic. Account 1. Oh, I have two good stories for this. One was just a dead deer. Somebody shot it in the middle of a completely empty National Forest campground, chopped off its head, and just left everything in the middle of the road. You could see the bloody shoe marks walking away as if the person kicked the head a couple of feet. Slept with an axe next to the sleeping bag that night. Second one happened on some random National Forest campground in New Mexico, I think, middle of nowhere. There was one other group of campers there. They had a 10-feet bonfire, everybody wore KKK-style costumes, and they were standing around the fire and talking, chanting. At the entrance to their campsite, they had a big wooden cross stuck into a pile of boulders, draped in barbed wire, and a bloody, at least with red stains, white piece of cloth was hanging across it. No idea what that was, but it kind of creeped us out, and we didn't sleep well that night. Account 2. Family was watching some bears from their car and at a safe distance. The dad put the small child on the car roof so he could get a better view. When the bear moved, the family got in the car to follow but forgot the kid. They only got a couple feet before someone yelled at them to stop. The family only laughed. They didn't seem to realize what a serious situation this was. Account 3. I was stalked by a mountain lion for about 2.5 miles of hiking through Bob Marshall National Forest. The first signs were terrifying. It had been raining all day, and we saw tracks in the mud. The thing is, each track had less and less water in the further we went along. Not too long after that, I spotted it on a cliffside, walking with us without breaking eye contact for even a moment. Our group was a mixed bunch of generations, some slower than others. But once we noticed the fresh tracks, we made sure to stay tightly packed. I think that saved someone from getting mauled by the big kitty cat. Account 4. Only this year, while driving through a national park in South Africa, on the side of the road there was a dead female body. Don't really know how she died and why she was there laying in the middle of nowhere was pretty scary. Account 5. So several years ago, me and a few buddies were out horseback riding in the Shawnee National, southern Illinois. We came across an overhang of rock and earth that went back pretty deep like a cave. We decided to take a break and check it out and let the horses get a drink, and one of my buddies says to shut up and listen. We got quiet, and it sounded like from far back in this cave, a grown woman saying, help me, please help me. We got the hell out of there and told my grandpa about the situation. He called his friend, and a few of them went out looking, but never seen or heard anything. Pretty crazy to be typing this out hunting on some property connected to the Shawnee. Account 6. At Yellowstone, I once was shocked to see a dad walking with his kids up the side of one of the park's unnamed geysers. Didn't stick around to see them break through the crust and get scalded. A new chapter for death in Yellowstone. Count seven. People constantly use the National Forest to illegally dump trash. I was squirrel hunting, and I noticed that someone had dumped a child's wooden bed frame into the brush. I got closer and found on the ground a pile of broken and smashed picture frames with sentimental family photos still inside them. I wish that trash pile could have told me the story about how it came to be. Account 8. Once I saw a wolf while talking to my two friends. I was facing the wolf, but not the two guys. He went so close behind them that I just went silent scared in the middle of the sentence. When the wolf passed, only then I told friends what just happened. Account 9. Nighttime drive in a South African wildlife reserve. The whole observation car is looking towards where the spotlight of the car illuminates the carcass of a giraffe, which is eaten up by a trio of male lions. At some point I hear the sound of ooh, ooh behind us. I turn and there's over 20 pairs of yellowish eyes glowing in the darkness. A whole pack of hyenas trotting around in the dark, waiting for an opportunity to snip away some of the lion's kill. The situation was absolutely safe, but it gave me a good chill, thinking about how pants-shittingly terrifying this would be alone and on foot. Account 10. I was solo camping in the Roosevelt National Forest, sitting in a camp chair in a clearing looking up at the stars. From the edge of the clearing, I heard the freakiest sound, 
Kind of like someone screaming with a hoarse voice, but definitely not human. I figured it was probably just some nocturnal animal doing whatever it is they do and decided to play it cool. Then I realized I was completely kidding myself, so I quickly packed up my chair and skedaddled down the hill to my campsite and into my tent. Count 11. There I was, four days into a seven-day solo trek in Glacier National Park. The going was rough. It was mid-July, but winter always looms above 7,000 feet. Just as far from the end as I was from the start, on trails more suited for skiing than hiking, when I heard it behind me. I turned around to see a blogger looking for other people to write their listicle. Account 12. The body of a Sasquatch. Humanoid, but larger and taller. Covered with long gray hair. Face down, dead in a small clearing on the side of a hill. Visible from the main road, about 200 feet down. Account 13. Pulled some food for dinner from the bear box. Left door open as I was returning for more stuff. Walked 10 feet. Bear uses this opportunity to grab a bag of dog food from the box and hightail it. Tahoe. Account 14. I grew up in Cherokee National Forest in Tennessee. Not scary. But a strange thing is there was a bridge that goes over a lake nearby that everyone would go and party at. There was an old homeless guy that lived in the woods there that everyone just called Mountain Man Dan. He would always come and chill with us. He was friendly and we would share drinks, food, or drugs with him. There were always rumors that he had murdered people in Florida or something and had been hiding in the mountains since. Account 15. I used to live near a nature reserve and close by were mountains with a lot of nature. I live in Washington, so there's a lot of animals and nature. One night I was up late and suddenly I hear this incredibly loud and wretched scream. It woke my husband up and nothing wakes him up. I think it was a cougar or something, but it sounded incredibly close and the nature reserve was at least two miles away. This sounded like it was right in the apartment parking lot. Account 16. Not as extreme as some other stories, but several years ago I was camping with family and we had our dogs with us. Some fellow campers walking their dogs strolled past to warn us that a rattlesnake was headed our way. We quickly rushed the dogs inside and alerted the rangers. The snake got close to our campsite, but not close enough, and eventually moved away until the ranger pulled up with a bucket and snake hook. They put it in the bucket, loaded up the truck, and drove off towards the mountains to set it free far from camp. Had those people not walked by and warned us, we would not have known about the snake until it was in our campsite, and snakes are predators to dogs. Account 17. It was a giant fly. I thought it was a toy at first, but when I poked it with a stick, it started flying. My dumbass thought it was from Australia. I live in the Balkan region of Europe. I was five at the time. Account 18. Mark Twain National Park, 2016. I was about 16 and me and my older friends were camping. We were sitting around the campfire, bullshitting as usual, when suddenly we hear a blood-curdling scream in the distance. We froze. We all looked at each other, and then another scream, even closer. We ran as fast as possible to my friend Joey's car and hightailed it out of there. Never went camping again. I wanted to never go outside at all again after that. But I hope it wasn't a person having a manic attack or something, 